Welcome to the Between Two Wheels podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny Roebuck, and y'all know my co-host, Justin, Where's My Beard Bird, and Uncle, I ran out of nicknames, oh, Ken. That's rude. This episode is <laughs> being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your one-stop shop for all things Harley and Harley-related, and Nutsack, the last EC bag you'll ever need. On today's episode, we're going over some random Harley stuff. What's going on, guys? I bought a new shotgun. A new shotgun. Yeah, I got I got bit by the dove bug. Oh man, that <laughs> was fun. I went dove hunting. Yeah, and oh my god, it's it's a whole nother type of dude. It's so easy. You just fucking sit there. Oh, we never sat there. Oh no, we're, we're well where we were at. We weren't walking and flushing birds. Oh, we, that's all we, we did. were about. That was so fun. We were about two stock tanks. Oh jeez, and <laughs> I just sat in my fucking lawn chair and just waited them to fucking fly over our heads. Quite literally, just yep. just sit there, gun across my lap. Had music playing, drinking beer. Yeah. So yeah, that's why I like dove hunting. because I don't like sitting in blinds or anything. I like actually get out in there and walking around and shit like that. So Yeah, I came home with four, so I didn't get scared. It was the first time I've ever been dove hunting. Nice. Like legitimate dove hunting. Mm-hmm. So I decided I needed a better shotgun. <laughs> a better shotgun. Well, I mean, that 40-year-old Remington 870 Wingmaster oh. beat the fuck out of my shoulder. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I got me a new Franke Affinity Elite. I, I've... It's, You're speaking Italian. It's to made me. by Benelli, and it's Italian. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> they maybe I'm smarter than I thought. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. Uh, I uh, I shaved the beard off. I, I didn't get caught in a fire, as Ken asked, or I didn't have a job interview, as you asked. I just I, I rode dirt bikes back to back days, and it was fucking disgusting when I got home. And then the next day, I was eating and I was shoving mu- mustache into my mouth, and I was like, well. I'm fucking done. Yeah, sometimes I, yeah. It gets fucking annoying, dude. It's so annoying. But well, like, I mean, with, see, my problem was like with soup or so, oh, yeah. something like that. Like today. Sandwiches are my big one. Today Something I had chili. Open big fo- oh, yeah, chili. So like, I'm having to hold my beard back so I can <laughs> eat, eat a spoonful of chili. It was weird, though, because like I'm so used to like sitting at my computer and like if I look down at my phone, I'm used to it touching my chest, but I don't feel it anymore. It freaks <laughs> me the fuck out. <laughs> So this is an episode about Harley. Yeah. That's interesting. Is it? I ride a Harley. I ride one too. So did you know that the live wire production was halted? For like what, 16 hours? It was a couple days or something like that. Whatever. So (laughs) turns out. The speculation on on it all was great to read online. Oh, yeah. I can only imagine. Immediately everyone was, because no one read the, the whole No, article. they read the headline. They read the headline. And then. Live wire production halted for unknown reason or whatever. Oh, they should have never fucking produced it in the first time. I told right. you they're going to tank. Or or batteries started catching on fire or oh, some God. stupid shit. No, so the charging system had some issue. So Harley Davidson halted production just to find out that that issue was on one bike. One bike. On yeah. the assembly line. Yep. <laughs> Way to go, Harley. Yeah. Yep. Now, interestingly enough, they told all the people that had the live wire already, so three people, <laughs> yeah. they told all three of them that the bikes are safe to ride. Yeah. Just charge it at your dealership. You have to charge it at a dealership. Not at your, in your home outlet. Uh, yeah. I nah. got asked about this on the, the live cast I did last night with some other motor bloggers, and I said, I would much rather them halt production, fix it before they go out, than have another, you know, recall thousand oh. to hundred thousand bike recall like oh, they course. did with everything else. Oh yeah, and I mean, I'm sure they would like it too because those recalls are expensive as fuck for them. Oh yeah, so, oh, absolutely. Not only for the actual cost of you know mechanics and parts and all that, but the the negative. Oh, feedback. all the negative oh, press. Yeah. Yeah, negative now, press. They did get some negative press, but I saw this first on the Wall Street Journal. Oh, of course, it popped up. It's a uh, tax bracket right there. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I get that. I get the San Antonio News Express or whatever it's called. I get Twitter <laughs> only on the we- only on the weekends. <laughs> so speaking g- speaking of Twitter, uh, since we're all about sidetracking on this episode, absolutely. Um, so I was in San Francisco this week. I'm sorry, and staying on the eighth floor downtown of my hotel. All of a sudden, it's like nine o'clock at night or something like that. The entire fucking bed starts shaking. I was like, what kind of fucking hotel is this? And then did you put a quarter in it? And yeah. then the entire room starts shaking and the entire fucking building starts shaking. I was like, what in the fuck? And I, I go to, I try to Google it. Nothing. I go look on Twitter. Sure as shit. Yeah. A small little 3.2 magnitude earthquake just 
went through like it's nothing. I I want to experience an earthquake so bad. They have earthquakes here in Texas. I've I've never and felt I've one. never experienced no. one. No. <laughs> I so, want to so bad. So one of the other guys I was traveling with, he was up on the 30th floor. And oh, there's a podcast, pups. Oh, oh. Yeah, studio dogs. <laughs> Gotta love them. Um, he just said, fuck it. He's like, I'm on the 30th floor. There's nothing I can right, yeah, do. You're, just you're just done die. At that point. Yeah. And, but yeah, it so turns out that if it's not above like a six, they don't even mention it. Someone must have rang your doorbell or something. Or the wife's home. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah so twitter is how i found out about an earthquake happening i kind of figured it out was it your first earthquake i would hope you'd figure it out you being you know <laughs> a, an adult with a brain <laughs> <laughs> what's what's happening here is i well, rock so back when, it, when it first happened i thought because my room was right next to the elevator and i thought maybe the elevator just had a bunch of people in it or something and it was shaking as it's going up okay and i was like uh, that wouldn't shake my bed. Yeah, I can see that shaking the TV or something, but not the bed and then the entire fucking room. That's how earthquakes work. Yeah, it's crazy. But uh, but yeah, when I got into the office the next morning, I was like, okay, did any of you guys feel that fucking earthquake? And then everyone's <laughs> like, oh my god, yes. And now none of us are, you know, in Cal or none of us are Californians, so we were all kind of freaking out. And then the ca- one yeah. Californian that's in our group, she's like, no, it's nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was like, sleeping. I was like, fuck you. It's nothing. Yeah. Rock it's like, it's like us when we sleep. see a deer versus like someone that comes in from, you know, California oh, and yeah. sees a deer. They they flip shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> or any wildlife, really. So speaking of things that uh, didn't know about or haven't experienced, five things that Harley Davidson has made that we didn't know about. Some of these things really surprised me. Butt oh, plugs? fuck yeah. Butt plugs. Exa- oh, okay. yes. But they're vibrating butt plugs. Yes. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. It's because they can't counterbalance. (laughs) 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 There it is. Um, Speaking of pew, 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 they made rockets. What? This is crazy. This blows my mind that I didn't know this. (laughs) So from the 1960s to the late 80s, Harley Davidson under AMF created the LR-64 drone rocket engine to help the U.S. military simulate ICBMs. And we all know in that time frame, yep. they were simulating Russian ICBMs. Uh, I actually was, did find out why they, they halted production of them, though. Uh, they, were, they were leaking too much oil. <laughs> <laughs> See what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. But really, I mean, nearly 30 years. How do you get in? Like, how does that bridge the gap? Like, I can see, like, when Mitsubishi sells cars and TVs, you know. It's electronics. It's electronics technology, technology, yeah. Technology, manufacturing. And they also have IT services, yeah. like IT consultants. How the fuck do you go from making motorcycles to rockets? Like, those don't go together at all. Yeah. Aside well, from the fact that it's physics and engineering. and it's So, AMF is a conglomerate. Yeah. So, they have their hands in a little bit of everything. Bowling alleys and shit. Yeah. So... <laughs> Thinking about it from that standpoint, they probably had some rocket engineers (laughs) for something they were doing. We don't want them to work on the fucking motorcycles. But let's they can fucking yeah. And if they would have had the rocket scientist on a fucking motorcycle (laughs) as opposed to creating Russian, you you know what happened is is, is some fucking rocket scientist he'd gotten fired from his job and he came to work for hard AMF, and they were like, we we build motor we build motorcycles. This isn't rocket science. (laughs) And then he said, hey, there's a very lucrative military contract. (laughs) And a lot of people don't know this, but Harley-Davidson's been in bed with the U.S. military since World War I. Yeah. Late World War I. The military is a whore, so. True. They just fuck everybody. They say loose lips sink ships, but. Well, I mean, you were in the Navy, so you would know. Thank you. Um, (laughs) Speaking of the Navy. Harley Davidson man. produced <laughs> Tomahawk segues, boats. <laughs> Tomahawk boats for four years. And so they bought this company, and this was like in 1961 or something like that. They bought Tomahawk boats and they made the Tomahawk boats, a family style boat that came in lengths from oh, okay. 11 foot to 18 foot in length. I was so fucking confused. I was like, are those the boats that carry Tomahawk missiles? Like, I thought they'd be bigger than 18 feet. <laughs> no. Wow. Small, small Tomahawks. They use those drone engines. <laughs> drone engines. Fuck, can you imagine? <laughs> so, yeah. They They're made, actually some pretty cool looking boats. 
they are. I mean, they kind of remind me of the. I gotta look it up now. Really classy, but they're not the ones. But the the shape of them. Yeah. The really classy boat you see in James Bond. Yes. Yeah. They, yeah. They, that's kind of the well, shape I mean, that was of that, them. That was that era. Yeah. So I mean, but uh, but yeah, eleven to eighteen foot boats. Now, due to the need of fiberglass in Harley's other projects, they discontinued the boat. Which I think that's kind of weird. All these boats look exactly the fucking same to me. Well, yeah, well I mean, they are. they're 11 foot, 12 <laughs> foot, 13 foot. Yeah, these weren't like speed boats or ski boats or anything like that. I'm sure you could probably pull some skiers with it. Probably. But, uh, but yeah, they're just family kind of cruisers. Yeah. So that's that's the connection. Cruiser <laughs> motorcycle, cruiser, cruiser lake boats. boats. And yeah. the demographic is middle-aged white males. Yeah. I mean, that's their marketing. <laughs> Still. All they had to do was change a fucking logo. Like, all right, Spot send it to on. the same exact places. All those magazines, yeah, same ones. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, something else they made. Golf Weekly. <laughs> <laughs> Close. <laughs> Close. Uh, the four car. Not the four skin. The four car. So who needs a sidecar when you can put your gear and people in front of the rider? From 1913 to 1915, Harley-Davidson produced the four car for commercial delivery vehicles. Oh, I know what this is. This thing had a 600-pound payload capacity where the steering was connected to two front wheels. So in essence, this is like the earliest version of the Can-Am Spider. Yep. Yeah. But you had a much larger... Um, trunk, if you will. Yeah. This is the one they talked about on Harley and the Davidsons. Yes. Yeah. Yep. But wasn't it Ford that ended up stealing the contract or something like that? If I remember the movie correctly. Or no, I don't remember. I haven't the seen the movie. No. Don't waste your time. It's fucking garbage. Oh, damn. Sorry. Sorry <laughs> yeah. for anyone who hasn't. Spoiler alert. It's terrible. Um, but yeah, so they made these for two years uh, to help, I guess, increase the commercial... Yeah use of motorcycles they were going for that military contract if i remember correctly probably that's what they really I mean, wanted hey, it for you know make at least it makes sense it, it stays in line with motorcycles mm -hmm. unlike a fucking rocket engine yeah. and a boat <laughs> yeah <laughs> well if you, if y'all like that you're gonna like my next one dude <laughs> Lawnmower engines. I'm telling you, man, they're just sticking with the same demographic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So in they didn't sell white sneakers, man. They're perfect. <laughs> uh, in 1929, Harley Davidson produced a single engine lawnmower engine for the Worthington Mower Company to power the overgreen model of lawnmowers. Now, this was the first generation of golf course and commercial lawnmowers. Now, golf course lawnmowers are pretty impressive machines oh yeah yeah so this was the very first one i mean it's it it's was, a big deal on how the grass is cut at golf courses oh, dude they look pretty dope too <laughs> oh hell yeah it looks like a uh, it looks like a car yeah, it looks it like does. a mini fucking like rat rod almost yeah like a roadster with a yeah line. <laughs> dude that's dope oh shit they're big too yeah, they're massive. <laughs> oh shit, they are big. I thought that was much smaller. <laughs> I was thinking like regular, like John regular, Deere like size. riding lawnmower size. Oh no, no dude, it's a full bench seat across the back of that thing. It's a tractor. <laughs> yeah, it's a tractor. That's dope. Um, but yeah, they made these dude. for Worthington. Imagine if I get my hands on one of those through the Put an Ellis in it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they made these for them through the entire depression. Okay, so that's kind of cool. That's depressing. Well, you still um, need to mow grass, you know, if you could afford to water your lawn. Road, now, roadblock would have been in that <laughs> neighborhood. Yeah, but he would have been paying a, a Chinese man at that point to <laughs> right. come mow his yeah, lawn. Yeah, because back yeah. then it was about Chinese. <laughs> um, <laughs> not racist because it's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, in 1966, Harley Davidson unveiled the Utilicar. <laughs> this looks cool, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, the utility car, utility car was a three-wheeled golf cart, in essence, um, that could carry 750 pounds of cargo and came in two models, gas and electric. Did you catch that? 1966, oh. they had an electric one. Now, and here's the thing. According to what I saw, the electric one was used for indoor use. Huh. They made it so that it could be used in factories, major factories, okay. so it wouldn't have all the smog. 
And it's it probably ran a lot better because you know it wasn't leaking oil everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. But uh, the gas powered one. Somebody would always want to change the exhaust to make it louder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the Make gas the powered thing. one could get up to thirty five miles per hour. Oh shit! Damn. Yeah, not bad for a golf cart. I mean, no. I think, and those things are still. I mean, the obviously, you know, it's forty years later, but still using that same shit. Yep. You know, you go look in factories and. I mean, most golf carts have four wheels now, but still, yeah. they're still used today. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, those are the five things that Harley Davidson used to make. The, the rocket just... The, mo- the rocket still yeah. blows my mind. Yeah. I mean, at least I can understand the lawnmower engine, kind of the boat, yeah. you know, and the utility car and, and their first, uh, the four car. The tractor I, definitely makes sense. I can understand those, but the fucking rocket engine... I feel so, like every automotive or something like that has made a, a lawnmower at some point. Like, that's how Lamborghini and Ferrari started. I yeah, mean, they made tractors. Can you, that's insane to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good pivot. You pivot. Know, from, pivot. From, pivot. From, from lawnmower to high-end sports cars, supercars. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, <laughs> let's talk about... This new branding that uh, Harley's doing, their new logo. Well, let me put that in quotations. Okay. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, to better adjust to the styling needs of the new millennium by up to. <laughs> is it millennium or millennial? Did you make. Is no, that a no, no. <laughs> 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 to help with the. <laughs> this Uh-oh. is just stupid. We broke him. <laughs> They updated their logo to be more aesthetically pleasing to the eyes of those who are more style oriented. Mm-hmm. It's a very minimalistic and clean design, and it's meant to look more balanced and modern. I can't like, talk shit because it's exactly what's on my bike. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, I put the new logo on there. <laughs> I mean, you really, uh, yeah, you did. It's exactly the same thing. Like, there so, might be a little bit of spacing thing, but it's the exact same fucking thing. Yeah. So, you read in the article, they're still keeping the. Barn shield. The barn shield that with Harley Davidson on it. That's going to be for their classic. What, what, what did it say? Classic or antique or? Yes. Something yeah. along those lines. Old people stuff. Old people stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the new barn shield, which apparently they changed the dimensions and the curves and the okay. angles, the and angles and, stuff. and the shit. And they're just not putting Harley Davidson, the words Harley Davidson yeah. in there. Yeah. Just the outline. Yeah, just the just the outline. If, if you've seen my bike, you know the logo, what the logo on the tank looks like. It's the exact same fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. Literally. So they not only copied your bike, now they're copying your logo. I mean, those motherfucking trends that are over here. I'm joking, guys. This is sarcasm if you can't fucking pick it up. <laughs> we, I'm sure we can get a lawsuit going, I'm sure. Oh, you think so? Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> good fucking luck. <laughs> <laughs> so here's, here's what kills me. Companies go and do this. I wonder how many people actually notice the change. Well, this is a new logo, the same as like the iPhone is the new iPhone. Yeah, I mean, you it's know, the they, same went, they went from the original logo that said Harley Davidson to one that is the same design, bar and shield that just doesn't say Harley Davidson on it. Yeah. Let's, but let's be honest, though. I mean, we were talking about this a little bit off air. Like whoever they've hired in as their new. Uh, like clothes designer, you can tell they're going a completely different re- direction. Someone that's obviously a lot younger, or at least knows what the younger people like. Yeah. Because you know, now I see, I even saw a Harley shirt on a, like a Facebook ad. I was like, that's pretty dope. That's a Harley shirt. And then I saw it, it was like sixteen fifty, like the price. I was like, oh shit, are they going to start lowering their t-shirt prices too? Well, Amazon or Amazon. Well, yeah, Amazon. Harley's on Amazon now. Yeah. So, so I mean, if they can get to like a decently, like, 16 bucks that's pretty cheap for a t-shirt i, I i'd pay 16 bucks for a harley price. shirt especially if it you know doesn't have eagles and american flags and flames and shit all over it and it's whoa, just whoa, like whoa, a whoa, 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 whoa. you non-patriotic fuck okay. <laughs> all right but yeah i mean like one reason i bought the heart <laughs> the the harley riding jacket that i bought yeah. the main reason i bought it is because it literally only says hd on the front chest yeah there's nothing else on it it's no, not like my jacket. No wings, <laughs> no flames, no, no dragons. Yeah, <laughs> I just this this type of stuff kills me though. I why uh, every company does it. You know how much money they probably spent. Oh, how much money they're gonna make? Give it the same amount of the, money the they've same, been making. The same amount. Or if okay, you, that's not a loss. <laughs> Well, I mean, still they, profit. Well, I mean, you know, I but mean, it's not as high as Wall Street wants. No, so. of course. But, Fuck but, Harley. But for me, like. <laughs> 
I mean, literally, like for me, one of the reasons I don't buy Harley shit is because it says Harley and fucking flames and dragons and all that shit all over. And that's not my style. I want a simple style. Put one logo on there like they did with my jacket and I'm fine with it. I mean, look, I've got one logo in front. Now, this shirt, of course, does have stuff on the back, but it doesn't have like it doesn't say Rogue Rider across the entire bag. It's just small and then some art with it. Yeah. Like, I mean, my Rogue Rider shirt it says rri on the front and yeah. on the back it has their other logo their other logo yeah yeah it's super uh, look at all the new get lowered stuff all the new get lowered line looks fucking awesome it's, but it's that same thing very small minimalistic in the front and a simple clean design in the back yeah it's what people want yeah people don't want to be walking billboards well no because no. i'm not getting paid to advertise for you <laughs> no you're literally paying, paying them to do yeah. it <laughs> so Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's something new. We found one website. It's better than no websites. All right. So when we come back from our ad break from Nutsack, let's talk about the Harley Davidson scooter and mountain bike. Nutsack is the only EDC bag the crew carries, and for good reason. They're crazy and awesome. They get their name because folks said they had to be nuts to manufacture a man bag in America with American waxed canvas, American leather, and American labor. We want you to join us in the two-week challenge. Buy a bag from them, use it for two weeks, and if it doesn't completely change the way you carry your everyday gear, they will give you a full refund. We absolutely love ours from carrying around extra mags for our concealed carry to earbuds sunglasses vape stuff and business cards it is great having less shit in our pockets and it was because of the nutsack satchels that we were able to be less weighed down if you buy using our link nutsack will give you five dollars off to enjoy a beer head over to nutsack.com slash b2w that's n-u-t-s-a-c dot com slash be the number two w to get yours today and we are back <laughs> what a dick you waited for that t- <laughs> yeah, i did <laughs> i knew you were going to yeah, it's fine um so harley davidson is going for that well they've been going for the x games crowd for a while but uh to go along with the push bike that they have for toddlers and for hasso harley is also bringing an electric mountain bike and a scooter possibly to the market now these are still in concept stage but they actually have some running models um they had x games gold medalist jocko strong taking the mountain bike through its paces on a a snow covered mountain and he was saying that he would love to take it on the dirt and really have some fun with it as the torque was insane now we all saw the videos of this. It was pretty dope. It was a pretty <laughs> cool video. The bike itself looks good. Yeah. It looks clean. I, I don't know. Well, I'm not a mountain biker, but I don't know if I'd want that kind of engine or that kind of torque on a mountain bike. But for, well, for, for competitors and people who are doing some serious actual mountain riding, it might come in handy, well, especially so, going up the mountain. So they have, so electric bikes are nothing new. Right. Uh, there's There's one company, I can't remember their name. They've been making them for several years now, mm-hmm. uh, and they cost like a thousand dollars or so. I mean, they're Oof. expensive, but you know they'll take you up to twenty or thirty miles per hour in high speed mode, and you can change it, you know, nerf it for your kids or whatever. But I mean, it makes sense. I mean, they got the toddler bikes, yeah, the which, Hasso bikes. Which those are really cool. <laughs> Watching the kids ride those oh, yeah. things, four hundred bucks too is. Is amazing to watch those kids yeah. ride those things. So if the standard one that you're talking about is a thousand dollars, the Harley Davidson one would be about thirty five, four thousand thirty five hundred to four thousand dollars, you think? Yeah, that's a down payment. <laughs> 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 but I mean, uh, no, I mean it's still got pedals. You yeah. know. So it, you, it's still a functional. It's still bike. a functioning bicycle. It's super urban, but I mean at the same time you're not running into the issues that you're having with a electric motorcycle. Like you're very less likely to get a ticket for parking on the sidewalk with electric bike than you are an electric motorcycle. Well, because you know there's no engine in it. Yeah, and I know a lot of states they they every state's very different, but I know a lot of them as, as long as they're not producing X amount of kilowatts or whatever, you can even ride them on like uh, on the sidewalk or like uh, walking paths. Like in hmm. New York, they have like the walking paths or like the bridges and shit like that. So it's not classified as a a moving vehicle it's not classified as like an on-road vehicle correct yeah uh, so i mean that you can't take it on like like you would motorcycles which that's that's a plus but also on the other side say for example if you do get caught out and you go past your your charging limit 
you still have pedals. Yeah. Like you can still get home. You're not just fucking shit out of luck. I wonder how heavy that bike is in real life. I bet it's nothing, dude. I mean, granted, it's going to be heavier than a bicycle. But okay, so I believe this is the brand I saw. Ped- Pedego. 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 Okay. So just one of their their Pedego. cheapest uh, off-road bikes, mountain bikes, twenty six ninety five. Oof. So $2,700. That's starting. <laughs> so I mean, think about the boosted boards. I mean, the electronic skateboards. Those things are close to... F- a grand, if not over. Yeah. yeah. So their Elevate full suspension EMTB is fifty four ninety five. Okay. So the Harley Davidson one will probably be about seven grand. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. So I, like yeah. I couldn't swallow that. No. Seven. So like they have a they have a, they have a they have a commuter bike, <laughs> and it's eighteen ninety five. I mean, that's, we're, we're talking very urban. Yeah. Use that's I mean us out here in the suburbs we could not use that. No oh, man, but, they, got, they got a folding one. But where that would come in handy, again, if you are going out to a mountain and you don't want to have to expend all your energy just going up the thing just to be able to ride back down, you use the motor to get you up, and then you can just pedal down and do it that way. I, I don't know. I'd have to talk to someone that, that does that to even get a, an understanding. I'll ask yeah. my brother. He's gotten really into that shit. Yeah. Yeah. So the scooter. Now it's a pretty decent looking scooter. Now, what's I think it the, looks dope, dude. What's the ones that they have down in downtown? Those sit down scooters. Oh, those are razors. Razors. It's just another iteration of the the limes and the birds and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So this one, it's a sit down scooter. It has like a banana seat on it. Yeah. So it's retro. It looks like those uh, the Coleman. Yeah. Um, yeah, mini bikes, mini trail bikes yeah. that you can buy at Sam's. The camping bikes. Camp bikes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. By Coleman. Yeah. I'm just, I want one so bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they had another X Games guy. This is one of the hosts, uh, Jack Matrani. I probably butchered that, but I don't care. Um, he said it was very quiet and smooth. But to be honest, all of the electric scooters are quiet, quiet. and I'm guessing smooth. Until uh, you you know get flat spots on them from going into a stoplight and lock up the rear brakes. Yeah, you got to stop me and you can't run that light. Who would do that, though? No, nobody would do that. <laughs> Fucking hooligans. <laughs> <laughs> so but, right after, so a little backstory for, it was your wife's birthday, correct? Yes. yes. Yeah. So for Ken's wife's birthday, we went downtown to a, a steakhouse. All of us got pretty intoxicated. Well, most of us. Yeah. You know, not me. Not this fucking loser over here. No, I'm just kidding. He was our DD. So I was able to get very intoxicated. I only had like two drinks at night. I had more than that. Maybe, maybe he sure. had two before you showed up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I had two before you showed up. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, we got intoxicated. And we went down to, to ride those scooters, and we rode them for, like, close to two hours. Oh, like we yeah. rode them so much, I had blisters on my hands. Yeah, <laughs> same here. But anyways, the very next day, I see, like, a, like a video of this woman getting arrested for scootering while intoxicated. Oh, Jesus and I was Christ. like, oh, my God. If we would have gotten locked up for <laughs> scootering <laughs> while intoxicated. What are you in jail for? <laughs> Scooter. Oh, DUI. I'm on my bandit scooter, scooter rider. S U I. Scooter and under intoxication. <laughs> Good God. lord. Um, something else came up. Uh, a new patent hit uh, from Harley Davidson. It's a bubble fairing. Now, uh, the patent is for the bubble fairing. Yeah. So not for a new motorcycle, but for a fairing. For the Correct. fairing. So the fairing looks a lot. Like the old VR one thousand. I gotta look this up. I think it's just gonna be an iteration of uh, this one, the Roadster. I think is what they're calling that one. The Street Fighter. The Street Fighter. Yeah, I think it's just gonna be another iteration of that. I think it's just, they're just gonna slap that on that bike. You put the fairing on it. Yeah. Yep. So actually, the the pictures. Wow. Okay. So so this is a nineteen ninety four VR one thousand. That's not a terrible not looking, a bad looking bike. bike. No. I love bubble fairings. So the motor company released its five-year release plan, if you will. And in one of the images, you can clearly see a legit sport bike in the background. Now, no specs are out, but the bike looks a lot like the live wire, but with a gas motor. Now, Harley attempted this in the late 80s, early 90s uh, with the VR1000, but that was a short-lived failure. Uh, the concepts matched oh, by the new Harley patent includes that bubble fairing of old. 
I don't know. I Harley Davidson has the ability to actually create great motorcycles, but I don't know if people are going to trust a sport bike from Harley. I completely yeah, agree. Yeah, I, I can agree with that. And, well, I mean, let's face it. Buell didn't make a profit for pretty much the Ever. entire time yeah. he was in business. Um, and... Oh, okay. I see the picture now. Okay, I disagree. Well, maybe. I think it still it still could be an iteration of this. So the original VR one thousand was fifty thousand dollars. Well, it's Harley. Fifty thousand so, yeah. dollars. You can look yeah. at that picture and kind of line it up. They have the same major lines. Yeah. Maybe utilize the same frame. It might be a different bike, same frame, and the same family. But uh, well, I think did... it's going to be tied along with the Street Fighter. Oh. So the Street Fighter and the Pan America are sharing very similar frames, very similar motors. I thought we discussed this already. I don't think they're sharing frames. I think they're sharing motors, though. I think they'll share motors, but probably have a slightly different frame. Yeah, I'd say quite drastically different. But we do know that they are going to a modular motor setup. Yeah, for sure. So we'll probably see that motor in that bike if they move it from concept to actual production. But I have to say the clay model of that Street Fighter looks dope. Like actually seeing it stand up and not over on its kickstand. Hmm. I might get excited about that. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, I've liked all the It'll the come out there. just about the time I'm done with the chubby shuttle, so it'll be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, Harley also had another sport bike company that they bought um, other than Buell. MV Agusta. Oh, yeah. Oh. So yeah, we, that's one we sat on at IMS. Yeah. Yeah. Uncomfortable as shit. Highly overpriced. Yep. Uh, premium sport bike brand. Same yeah. Same demographic. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> that's the upper middle class white people. <laughs> but those bikes were going for sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. Oof. Uh, how? I don't get it. Well, but we're not track guys. It doesn't yeah. matter, man. So, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I, I don't. It's it's different when you get up to that amount of money. I think because like, say for example, like the dirt bike world, like it's it's highly known that you know KTM is more expensive, but it's only like you know ten to fifteen percent more, and you're getting a lot more for your money. Yeah, right? when you're talking that. You're talking. I mean, you can get an R1 fully loaded for probably under thirty grand. Oh, and yeah. it's a great way, way, track way under bike. that. Way under, and that's going to be under. a great track bike, an R1M or whatever. I mean, that's you're talking a hundred percent price increase. Are you really getting that much? Are you getting a thirty thousand dollars more of a motorcycle? Well, here's the question: Are you getting an H2 R or whatever the fuck the track version is? Because that's how much that track version yeah. cost. Uh, no, I I don't yeah. see. It. I don't know. I mean, shit. The H2 was what, what was it? Twenty nine. I thought was, it was, was the H2? The H2 is 29, but he's talking about the H2R. The H2R, the race yeah. track yeah. only model. But I'm, I'm saying just still for 29,000. Yeah. yeah. For 29,000, you, know, you, you get an, an H2. H2. <laughs> yeah. Well, for 60,000, you can go get a Confederate Cycles. Exactly. I would much rather. I've, but we're talking apples and oranges there. Oh, yeah. 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 Definitely not for track guys, but but you could turn some heads with the, oh, the Confederate bike yeah. for show. <laughs> yeah. If you don't know who Confederate Motorcycles is, you should absolutely look them up. They were also the ones that had their motorcycles in uh, Transformers. Yep. Yeah. And also, uh, oh no, that was a different company. Sorry. Yeah. I was thinking uh, Hobbs and Shaw, but that was the guys over in the UK. Yeah. Uh, the next Fast and Furious movie, the yeah, one gonna, that's about the chick. They're going to have several other bikes. Uh, Dom's girlfriend or whatever. I, I've lost track at this point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it's going to be like Fast and Furious 10 yeah. or 12. I don't know. But uh, his bikes are going to be in there as well. Yeah. Nice. I might hit him up because I'm thinking about planning an, an East Coast trip. For hey, next he already year. he already said. Yeah, if we yeah, make it out to ranch. Florida, where is it in Florida though? Oh, is who the fuck knows? Okay, it's northern, we need to find that out. Northern Florida. Yeah. If it's northern Florida, and we might be able to make that happen. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's in the Panhandle area. That would be dope as fuck. Yeah, and he already said you guys come out. He yeah, said we, he's got bikes for us to ride. Fucking hell. He's like, I got a hundred fifty thousand dollar bike you can ride. Fucking hell ride a bike that costs the same as my house <laughs> right <laughs> that's what it's about Oof. all right so let's move into our closing argument would you buy an electric scooter and i'm talking about the kick scooters like what we the lime and the uh whatever the other one was the birds oh man 
if I if I knew that I'd be able to use it enough, and first of all, I'd have to buy two of them, and they're about two hundred fifty bucks a piece. Yeah, I, I would. Because <laughs> look, I had a good time. Faith had a good time. Let's just think you can go and park downtown, and they, you know, and you can ride anywhere you want, and you just fold the handle down and take your scooter inside. They come with straps, yeah. so you can carry them like, like over backpack. the shoulder. Yeah. yeah. Justin, I would not. No, just because I couldn't. Even though it is a, a very low, well, relatively low cost item, I, I couldn't do it. I would be, I would buy an electric motorcycle before I bought an electric scooter, because hmm. I mean, like right now I live three miles from work, so I mean I could literally never pay for gas for you know months at a time, and really anywhere I work in San Antonio, even if I get a lower range bike like 120 miles, that's easily a day's commute. You mean like the live wire? No, <laughs> definitely not like the live wire. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I'm not spending more than 10000 on it. Like, that's flat out. So... If they dropped into, like, the 5, 6 range, So, maybe. So you wouldn't get an electric scooter. Would you look at, like, an electric bicycle? No. Just because, like, once again, I would not get my use out of it. I mean... I don't do any... I don't do anything in and around my neighborhood. Anytime I'm driving, I'm driving, you know, five, ten miles, which is just not going to work. They'll make it. Those bicycles will make it. They'll make it, but is it going to be plausible or, you know, not plausible, but. Does it make sense for you to have it? Yeah. Like an electric motorcycle. I mean, anywhere I can ride a motorcycle down, I can ride the electric motorcycle. True. But. So I would totally buy an electric shooter. Yeah. That's like five minutes of work for you. So. But. It's one of those things, the convenience of it. So if we wanted to go to Austin or something and we all had these scooters, we could put them in the truck, drive and park somewhere that's not going to cost $10 or $20 to go park there. We park at a gas station somewhere a little bit further away. And then you just hop on the scooters and go do your thing, then come back. Um, and I've, I've being in San Francisco, you, they're all over the place. Yeah. See, if but, I lived in San Francisco or something like that. Right, right. I mean, it's definitely for urban environments yeah like living out here doesn't make any damn sense no but if i was commuting downtown like say i went to my actual office oh i totally because i could go and park down at the bus station yeah the parking rides yeah and then no, absolutely that makes sense yeah yeah but to outside of the commuting part going back to what you just said you, you talk about you know going to austin and, and loading somewhere a little bit further outside of downtown there's going to be scooters there I'd rather pay the the three dollars or even ten dollars. I could do that twenty five times before I, you know, hit that two hundred fifty dollar price tag of a, of buying one myself. Yeah, that's that's how I justify. It. But like the commuting thing, if you're going to be using it at least two or three times a week, yeah, it makes yeah. sense. It makes sense because I mean you're going to hit that twenty five times in you know, no time. Huh. Yeah. So but, the the company I'm doing work for go in and it's a tech company bunch of younger guys and girls with boosted boards even the little mini boosted boards yeah i think it's badass dude dude taking you know driving in downtown san francisco is a waste of fucking time it sounds Mm -hmm. it sounds terrible the electric scooters the electric bicycles (laughs) they even have um kind of the same premise for motorcycles you can go and get a electric motorcycle. Oh hell yeah! And rent. I don't know what the cost is, but uh, but yeah, you can hop on those things riding around town. They're everywhere. And being California, they lane split. You know, you do whatever you want yeah. to do. And pedestrians I mean, have. We more were lane rights. splitting on our scooters. <laughs> <laughs> People were not happy they about were that. Not either, happy about which that. Which is at so all. funny because like I could be walking right next to you and be passing you, and it would be no big deal. Yep. <laughs> but because I'm doing it on the street, you think I'm cutting in front of you. Yep. <laughs> People are fucking stupid. Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels podcast. To see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. On behalf of Justin, Uncle Ken, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you're a jerk. Then be someone better. Peace. Uh, uh, uh,